On this week's show, we look into the popularity of restoring and customizing aluminum trailers, particularly Airstreams. Also, nothing can sideline your weekend on the road as quickly as a wheel-bearing failure. Jeff Johnston takes us to Hitch Pro & Tow in Eugene, Oregon to see how relatively simple it is to repack or replace those old bearings. Plus, we'll check in with Britta, our trailer chicks cooker, and see what she's preparing for us this week. All this and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by WineGuard, America's leading satellite TV antenna. WineGuard, television anytime, anywhere. One can't help but notice that when you're on the road or at a campground, the number of restored and customized vintage trailers. Many of them are finished in a nice shiny aluminum. And one of the most popular brands is the iconic Airstream. The popularity of restoring and customizing these beauties is growing more and more. Whether you choose to have the restoration shop do the work or decide to do it yourself, what you normally find in refurbing an Airstream is that most everyone leaves that classic exterior pretty well alone. All you really need to do is a good cleaning and lots of polishing. But the interior? That's a whole different story. So over here we put in a big countertop in the place of the other gaucho and this will give us a lot of work surface. Areas. A while back, we paid a visit to Sheila Johnson, the founder and publisher of Trailer Chicks magazine at her home and office in Suave Island along the Columbia River in Oregon. Her home is a 1976 trailer that she lovingly restored and decorated. Her mobile home shows exactly how one can remodel the interior relatively easy and exemplifies what Trailer Chicks is all about, living luxuriously in a small space and added some bling here for the countertops to get some things kind of shiny and updated a little bit. Sometimes what begins as a simple restoration project for yourself can quickly turn into an extended career. Matthew Hoffman from Santa Barbara, California, an architect by profession, bought and refurbed an old Airstream for himself. Before long, he was designing and refurbing Airstreams from clients from all around the country. One look at his interior designs and you'll see why Airstreams are what we call in the hot rod world, sleepers. In other words, when it comes to the outside appearance, one looks pretty well like another. But step inside and each one is a world of its own. Remember on last week's show, we introduced you to Steve and Bonnie Gibbons, full-time business owners and full-time RVers. Like Sheila Johnson, their home and office is a shiny, personalized Airstream. This is my little house right in here. Bonnie gave us a tour and showed us some of the changes they did to fit their personal tastes and office needs. Even though the changes and upgrades done to their trailer were somewhat moderate, that's not the case with their 1984 Airstream that's sitting inside their kayak store. After the break, we'll check out the full restoration that Steve and Bonnie have been working on and should be done by the time you see the show. We'll be right back. With the WineGuard Traveler, you can watch any program on any TV, no matter where you are. WineGuard. TV without compromise. For more information on WineGuard satellite antennas, visit our website at WineGuard.com. Visiting Steve and Bonnie Gibbons at their Scapoose Bay kayak store, we couldn't help but notice that nice big shiny Airstream sitting in the back of the store. 
we asked Steve to show us the extensive renovations and upgrades they were doing themselves to the trailer. I built fire trucks till I was about 30 years old and I've always loved building unique things and we decided that in our shop here in the winters when we weren't kayaking that we would re renovate a uh, Airstream trailer. So we bought this 34 foot limited Airstream down in California and we've actually gone through the entire interior and we're working on the exterior now. We've taken the clear coat off of it and we're starting to polish the outside of the vehicle. We've gone through the awnings themselves. We've checked them all out. As you can see, I've jacked it up in the air. We're underneath looking at the water tanks and things. When you come into the inside, what's nice about this is we literally gutted it out completely. Um, it used to be baby blue interior upholstery with a white vinyl floor and brown uh, cabinets. And my wife, who's been kind of an interior decorator as well as owned an art gallery, has a real eye for being able to come up with the right kind of colors and materials. Uh, we stripped the entire interior out to where it was just a hollow body airstream. We put in a new subflooring, and then we came up with a product here that is actually a recycled fiberglass rubber matting in the, in the looks of a bamboo that's a real nice commercial quality. And once we got the subflooring down on the bottom of the airstream, we cut it in two pieces only and we're able to lay the entire floor. As you come inside, I'll be able to show you some more about how nice it is and what it's looked like. I have a local a friend of mine that is an upholsterer that does uh, boats and different things like that. And of course, living in an airstream or any trailer is sort of like living in a boat as well. So it's kind of nice for that. We took all the cushions out and sent them over to him to have the fabric installed although we picked the color and the fabric everything that was removable in this entire place was removed all the cabinets all the tables i put new countertops new sinks new faucets we took a recycled glass tile and retiled the back of the kitchen itself um, we've gone through the air conditioners the heaters the stoves all the components of it Back over on this side, we also rewired it and made sure that the inverter works properly, put new batteries, checked all of our fuses and things. Back from my fire truck days working with different types of aluminum, what we would do is take aluminum pieces and we could actually take that same piece and put it under a drill press with a wire wheel and fish scale the material. So what I did is I took the wood that used to be on here, reshaped the actual aluminum itself and fish scaled it on all of the trim pieces along the bottom the back of the cabinets into the bedroom as well as what used to be a TV here. The inconvenience was sitting on a couch and being able to turn to your left hand side and watch the TV so we mounted a new uh, flat screen TV over by the kitchen table so you can sit here comfortably and look at the screen itself makes it a little bit easier. Um, again we're in the middle in the process of rewiring we've got this all set up I put new battery selector switches and things like that on it. We are uh, just finished the antenna on the top. We're running the wires for the new flat screen TV over off by the kitchen. We've come through new countertops, new recycled glass backing on the kitchen. We resurfaced the dining room table itself, installed a flat screen TV, new slide out cabinets all in the same material, resurfaced the refrigerator, redid the interiors of the cabinets themselves. When you get into the back area, we tile the back kitchen, um, excuse me, the back bathroom, and also put in a nice brass sink. Reline the entire interior of the shower and redid the shower basin. In the back bedroom itself, we put in a new mattress. We've redone the carpeting and repainted. There wasn't a real lot that we had to do actually in the bedroom. Once this was all out of here, we could lay the floor. We went through the booster reels that are for the electrical wiring and the water to make sure they all work right and then put it back together again as well. We're about uh, two weeks from being completed on this project and then it'll be up and ready for sale. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of people that are interested in it already, so we're excited about that. We think it's gonna be a real nice, uh, a real nice trailer for somebody when we're done. I just thought this was kind of interesting how Airstream had designed this back in the 80s and maybe they still do, but this is kind of nice how that just kind of drops right down into a bed like that. Um, and then rolls back up the other way again. And the same thing is gonna happen with this one up front. It's kind of a small children's bed, but it also folds out and double folds like that as well. And then of course you've got the dining room table can fold down, so there's lots of sleeping area. And then of course underneath all this, we came back through and redid all of the cabinetry and stuff underneath with new flooring and, and all of that too, so. It's an Airstream, it's got some unique things to it that I like. Well, if seeing these beautiful customized trailers has whet your appetite, now's the perfect time to start looking for one. 
If you start restoring one now, you may have it ready for this upcoming summer. Coming up, Jeff Johnston shows us how to keep rolling on with a properly maintained wheel bearings. When you look at RVs, do you see green? A green RV means more than just a color. It means energy efficiency, water efficiency, and components made from recycled materials plus lots more. We know green RVs inside out. In fact, we certify them. To learn more about green RVs, visit our website at certifiedgreenrvs.com. Apart from a tire blowout, nothing will stop your RV vacation faster than a wheel bearing failure. And it's a fairly easy problem to avoid. As a rule, the manufacturers recommend you repack your wheel bearings about once a year, depending on use and mileage, of course. We're here at Hitch Pro & Tow in Eugene, Oregon, where the pros here are about to start on a wheel bearing job. They'll show you how they do it, and we'll also show you how you can do it at home using simple tools. Here's how it's done. It's always safety first for any project of this type. The Hitch Pro crew uses heavy duty commercial jack stands to support the trailer by its frame with its wheels off the ground. With limited jacking equipment, you can raise and support one wheel at a time at home. A chisel or sharp pry bar removes the dust cap and side cutters make fast work of pulling out the old cotter pin. Remove the spindle nut, also known as a castle nut, and the hub and bearings come free from the axle spindle. If you need to pry the hub free with some force, there's probably something wrong with the bearings and they may need to be replaced. The rear seal is removed using pliers or a pry bar of some kind. Clean the grease from the bearings, axle, and hub so you can examine the parts. This is when the inspections start. This grease is clean, for example, and doesn't show signs of water contamination. These axle spindle bearing surfaces are smooth and have no scratches or rust evident. This axle is ready for continued use. The hub bearing surface also looks good, so it's ready for cleanup and reuse. This bearing is smooth has no rust and is scratch free so it's safe to use again. Brown rust stains, scratches and thin grease reveal water has contaminated this bearing and broken down the grease. This bearing has to be replaced. Bearings are too inexpensive and too important to risk reusing one that's been damaged. These bearings came out in pieces. One unit had all of its rollers missing and the other was broken in two. Note the scarred and pitted bearing roller surfaces. Poor maintenance was responsible for these failures. The good bearings, washers, and nuts must be completely cleaned of old grease and the solvent of your choice. They should be spotless before repacking and reinstallation. Clean the drums of any dust or old grease contaminants. An aerosol brake cleaner can be used on the brake and backing plate parts to clean the assembly while it's accessible. A specialized bearing tool is used to repack the bearings at Hitch Pro. You can also do the job at home by hand, as technician Brian Wilson shows us. It's a bit messier, but just as effective. Take it in the palm of your hand, force the grease through the rollers. That way you're getting the grease down through the back here into where the rollers are. If you just do it like that, you're not really accomplishing a whole lot. You want to force it through on the end. Just whatever you got left. Wipe around the outside. After wiping some grease into the wheel hub, the larger main bearing is placed in the hub, followed by a new seal. Brian used a handmade tool to drive the bearing into place, flush with the hub surface and no deeper, 
but you can use a hammer and block of wood. I don't want to drive it in where it's past the... The hub with repacked bearings in place slides back on the spindle and the washer and castle nut are installed. And does that washer have a castle nut? Adjusting the nut calls for some practice and finesse. You don't want it too tight or too loose. The best way to do it is you have a pair of channel locks and you can rotate the hub by hand. Just kind of rock the castle nut back and forth. Snug the nut down so the drum still turns, then back it off a bit to line up the next slot with the cotter pin hole. You may need to repeat the snug and back up a couple of times to achieve the right adjustment. And then once the cotter pin's in there, sometimes you can back it off just a hair. Install a new cotter pin and snap the dust cap into place. Reinstall the wheels and the job is about wrapped up. While the tires are still off the ground, it's a good time to check and adjust the brakes as needed. Likewise, check the tire inflation pressure as part of the job. Uh, final checkup is just grab the wheel, give it a little tug up and down, make sure your castle nut's tight enough. You don't want any play in the a little bit's okay, but you don't want a lot of play. Fresh grease, readjusted bearings, new seals. This rig is ready for another year on the road. Check out the last time you had your wheel bearings done. Take care of this kind of service, and your trailer won't leave you alongside the road. See your owner's manual for more information on wheel bearing maintenance, or log on to our website at rollingontv.com. When it comes to RV glass and windshield replacement, there's only one name to remember, Duncan Systems. With thousands of windshields and side glass in stock, we are America's number one source for RV glass replacement. And now, we can even repair those fogged up windows at a fraction of the replacement cost. For more information, including our locations, visit our website at rvglass.com or log on to rollingontv.com. I'm going to show you how to make a really quick quesadilla and I'm using a cast iron skillet. It's a, just a flat top griddle that's really nice, gets good even heat. So I have my chicken already here, but it's a little bit cold because it's been in the refrigerator. So I'm going to take the heat off, just putting it on the griddle. So I, this will just take a minute because the pan's so hot um, and it'll help to cook the quesadilla quicker. Then I'm just going to slide that off into a bowl. And then I'm using flour tortillas. You could use corn, whatever you, your preference is. And just going to throw one down on here. You could choose whatever kind of cheese that you like or whatever you have on hand. Goat cheese would be great. Um, you could use a different kind of cheddar. You should you could use a fresh um, Mexican cheese. So I have that, and then I'm just going to add my warm chicken back on top here. Then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, fresh chopped green onions. You could add white onions, yellow onions. You choose what you like. You can use cilantro. I love cilantro, so I tend to put it on most things that I eat. Um, and then, if you want, you can add a little bit of salsa. This is just a jarred salsa. And now we're gonna put the top tortilla on. Give it a good press down. And then I think it's ready to flip. It cooks in probably three minutes. And then we'll just let that go for about probably three more minutes and it'll be ready to eat. While the quesadilla cooks, I'm gonna step over here and make a strawberry drink. So while we were on the island, we got some beautiful hood strawberries 
and I used about a cup of strawberries to a cup of sugar and let that macerate for a couple days in the refrigerator and it pulled out all the juice and this beautiful beautiful red juice and then you mix in with that about half as much vinegar and I used apple cider vinegar and that creates what is called a shrub so it's a way to preserve the summer fruit and then all through the year you can make this really nice refreshing beverage um, it's tangy and sweet at the same time and you can all you need to do is put a couple tablespoons over some ice so this is just another really fast and easy way to make a drink and a way to preserve your summer fruit just do that give it a mix with a fondue fork whatever you've got on hand and then so this is ready to go just like this, or you could add some fresh mint. Or another delicious thing you can do is add a little bit of vodka or gin to it. It makes a great beverage. This looks perfect. It's ready to eat. So here I have a salsa cruda that I made with cherry tomatoes, some radishes, a little bit of pickled jalapenos, and some garlic. Squeeze fresh lime over that, cilantro, really easy, ready to go. You could also put uh, if you like a little extra heat, pickled jalapenos, some jarred salsa, or hot sauce. Thanks again for joining Trailer Chicks at Island Cove on Sovie Island. All of these recipes can be found online for quick, healthy, delicious meals. We've come through new countertops, new recycled glass backing on the kitchen. For more information on anything you saw on this week's show, along with additional videos, stories, and news, visit us online at rollingontv.com. I think it's ready to flip. It cooks in probably three minutes. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.